What is up guys? Happy Toaster Tuesday. Welcome to the show. For those of you who are new to the channel, I've got a lot of subs in the last couple weeks. Welcome. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subbing. For those who purchased a shirt last week, yo, thank you so much, man. A lot of shirt sales over the last week and I really appreciate it, guys. Everything you guys do goes right back in the channel so I can keep delivering good content like we're going to do today. And as you might have guessed, we got nothing but manual transmission work today. So if you have a manual, you're going to love this video. If you have an automatic, it's not too late to sell that thing and get yourself a proper five speed. So anyway, sit back, relax. Let's get to it. So let's go over what we're going to be installing today. You got a bunch of goodies here. You guys are going to love this video. Number one, we got ourselves the Torque Solution. Um, little bushings that attach to shifter cables on your transmission. So over time, the rubber ones that are on your transmission wear out. These guys are made out of, I believe, plastic. So we're going to go ahead and install these. They should go ahead and give us a better shifter feel. Moving on, we have ourselves some shifter base bushings. Now, normally on your shifter, you have yourself some rubber bushings underneath the shifter plate. So what we're going to do today, is we're going to replace those rubber ones for aluminum ones, which should make shifting a vehicle much more precise. We're going to go ahead and change our transmission fluid. I have here two quarts of Royal Purple Max Gear 75 W90, and this stuff is good for GL4, which is really what we want in our vehicles. Um, it is kind of a multi-grade GL4, GL5, but it's really, really hard these days to find anything that's GL4 specific. So this stuff got really good reviews online, and we're going to go ahead and give it a shot. I've used Royal Purple products in the past and always had good results. So I'm pretty confident we'll be fine using this stuff. We are gonna go ahead and install a cool new shift boot. This one happens to be a bride one. Got that guy off Amazon and a cool new shift knob that I actually got off eBay. And this sucker, dude, this sucker here, this weighs a pound. It is killer heavy. So it should make our shifting a lot more precise. So of all the things we're gonna do today, changing your transmission fluid is gonna be the biggest pain in the butt. So we're gonna go ahead and knock that out first. All right, so we got the XB up on the ramps, nice and safe. We got our little drain pail here. So now let's get underneath this sucker and let's take a look at what we need to do. All right, so there are two bolts under here that should get your attention. Number one is this one right here. This is going to be the fill bolt uh, for changing your transmission fluid. And then the one back here, this one which is located on the bottom of the transmission is gonna be your drain bolt. So those are the traditional bolts you'd use to drain and fill your manual transmission fluid, but you know here at Extreme Delight Drivers we're not doing anything traditional. <laughs> we're going to think outside the box, man, and the reason that we're going to do it is because if you drain the fluid out of the bottom one and you fill it through the top one, you're going to need some sort of pump to get the fluid from the transmission bottle into the transmission, and I do have one of those lying around here somewhere, but I'm telling you, I got a way easier way to do this. All right, so the easier way to do this is to just go ahead and remove this bolt right here from the top of the transmission and fill it through here. So I think it's like a 23 millimeter bolt, but I don't have one. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this 15 16th. Am I even saying that right? Get it down here and loosen her up. So now that we got that bolt removed, we'll go underneath the transmission and remove the drain bolt, which I'll be using the exact same socket to do so. All right, so this has been draining for about 10 minutes and it's now down to a real slow drip. I went ahead and cleaned up our drain bolt. If you want to change the little aluminum gasket on there, you can. I typically don't change these unless they're leaking. So that's just me. You do what you want though. So with the transmission plug, it's just like the plug on your oil pan. You do not want to go bananas on this. Um, I don't know what the book says, but I would say maybe 25 foot-pounds, something like that. Obviously, if it's leaking, you tighten it more. Um, and that's why it's so important to get it as clean as possible, so that if there is a leak, you can easily identify it. All right, so good news, we're done messing around underneath the car, so now all we have to do is fill up the transmission with two quarts of transmission fluid. I have my handy little funnel right here, goes right in there and perfectly, and I'll go get the transmission fluid and fill this guy up. All right, guys, last thing is to clean and reinstall this little plug here. Someone can tell me what this does. I can't remember, um, but uh, yeah, make sure it's clean and then just reinstall it back into the home. 
Man, I'll tell you what, it is a nasty day here in Florida. It is just ridiculously humid out and it's done nothing but rain for the last four days. So I'm kind of happy to do something on the interior of the car and not something on the outside. All right, so before I go ahead and remove my center console shifter boot and the shifter knob, let's talk about what I have on here first. So this is a weighted shift knob. I forget the name of the company, but it's got an M on it. I'll go ahead and uh, link it down below if you're interested in purchasing it. It is a very good knob. What I like about it is it's rather tall, it's black, and it is heavy. It's not a pound, but it's uh, probably three quarters of a pound. So, been pretty happy with this setup. I'm just kind of tired of it. I'm a little over it. Um, I installed a nice new steering wheel, so I want to change up my shift knob as well. And I want to do something different with the shift boot. Now the shift boot was made by redlinegoods.com. I had this custom made. It is a two panel boot with green stitching. At one point I was gonna have a kind of green theme in here, so that's why I went with the green stitching. It's very soft, it's very plush, but I'm just ready to do a little bit something different. So um, if you guys are interested in purchasing either of these things, hit me up. They are gonna be for sale. I'm not trying to get rich off them either. Um, so they'll be going for a good price. So let's go ahead and get this center console removed. The first thing we're gonna do is remove the shift knob. So after you remove the knob, make your way to the back of the console. You'll find a Phillips head screw underneath a little pad in the cup holder. Go ahead and remove that. And now you can pull this thing off. It's kind of hard to do one-handed. So once you get to this point, you'll realize that it won't come any further, and that's because there is a plug going to this aux plug. So you gotta reach your hand around and disconnect it. So here's the little plug that you gotta disconnect. And once you do, we have access to the back of the console, the shift boot, as well as the shifter base. So next up, let's go ahead and remove these 12 millimeter bolts that are holding the shifter assembly down so we can replace those bushings. Okay, so this is the stock setup. You can see here there's a rubber grommet that sits on a little piece of metal. And this rubber grommet goes around the plastic shift platform. So we're getting rid of this and we're gonna replace it with this. Now I took a gamble when I bought this because this is for a Toyota Yaris, it's not for a Scion XB. However, it does fit like a glove. And I don't know if they ever made these for a Scion XB for whatever reason. So this is a perfect replacement and will definitely get us a better feel when shifting. Now the easiest way to remove the bushings is to take something like this guy, stick it underneath, and work away the metal center. Let's see it here in a minute. All right. So I got that guy out. So that guy comes out. And then we just have the rubber bushing. We're going to kind of take the same Neanderthal Chrome Magnon Man <laughs> approach to removing it. And boom. There you go. All right, all four are out, and look how nice the new ones fit in. No rubber. Boom. Once you get all four installed, go ahead and reinstall your bolts. Now to remove the shift boot, it's real easy. There are a couple tabs underneath here. You're gonna go ahead and push them in, or break them, like I just did there, and it will work its way out. There we go. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and remove the little ring that holds the shift boot in place here on the old setup. And we're going to reuse that ring over here on the new setup. As you guys know, I had a spare trim ring that I painted orange to match the center console dash piece, which we're going to be installing today as well. So this should look pretty cool once installed. There we go. All right, with the help of my wife, I was able to get that guy in there. I think it turned out pretty cool, man. Can't wait to get this thing reinstalled. Nice. So when it comes to shifter knobs, there are always a million options and I always go back and forth in between what it is that I want at the time, what it is that I like. I always do like a heavier knob. It just makes throwing the shifts a little bit easier because that extra mass goes ahead and throws it into the gear for you. So I was looking for a ball that was countersunk and that was heavy. I was able to find this thing on eBay for 32 bucks, and man, it looks like it's just going to be killer. Now there are some people that complain about a stainless steel knob or a solid, solid knob like this because they say that it gets too hot in the summertime or too cold in the wintertime, and we call those people women. 
<laughs> I never have an issue with it, man. This thing is kind of the same way. It is a solid piece of metal. It does get hot in the summertime. It does get cold in the wintertime. But you know what? Man up, dude. So this knob comes with a bunch of adapters. Uh, the one that we're looking for is M12 by 125, I believe. We're going to go ahead and grab one of these that looks like it matches up with the knob that we just removed. And I think it's that one. Let's take it to the car and see if it threads in. All right, guys, this is definitely the one that we need. So we can go ahead and actually screw this down as far as we can. And then we'll go ahead and grab the knob and install it over top. So I just went ahead and test fitted the knob and it fits perfectly. But before I install the knob, I want to make sure that the knob and the adapter never separate. So I'm going to go ahead and use some of this red thread locker. That's really all you need. So I don't know about you, but I think we need something to match that stainless steel knob. So how about some stainless steel pedals? Huh? What do you think about that? Now the way these guys work, it's just a little rubber kind of grommet that goes around them. And I think there's a similar one. Yep, there's a similar one on your stock pedal setup. So what we're going to do is pull these off and then reinstall these. Now you can use some hot water to warm these seals up or a hair dryer or something to make them a little bit more pliable. Um, it's up to you how you want to do it. But, you know, it's just kind of like a lot of wrestling with it, pulling, tugging, but we'll get them swapped out. All right, guys, we're making progress. This is not as easy as you might think it is. So far, I got the clutch and I got the brake pedal on there. And uh, last pedal is gonna be the gas pedal. Now the gas pedal, as far as I can tell, you don't actually remove this pad, so the new pad's gonna go over it. Um, so, I got it soaking in some hot, soapy water, and this has been the best, best way to do this so far. The, the hot, soapy water makes the rubber pliable, so I can slide it on over. So, one more to go. All right guys, we're gonna go ahead and install the Torque Solution shifter bushings. And because I have this awesome custom intake and not the OEM one that takes up all the room in here, I don't have to deal with worrying about how to get to these bushings or the top of the transmission for that matter. So let's go ahead and pull these pins. I hope you guys can see that. Let me get the camera all the way down there. There's one pin there. And there's one pin there. Go ahead and grab one of these tools. Get down in here and pull these pins off. And hopefully not lose them. All right, so we got them off, but you know they didn't come off without a fight. I use a little WD-40 on them to gonna loosen them up. And now let's see if we can get down there and lift up the arm. Right away, a washer fell into my hand. Everything's covered in oil, so I don't wanna put it on the uh, Okay, got that guy out easily. And how about this guy down here? Got another washer in my hand. Another washer. And then let's see if we can pop him off. All right, so they're both off the shifting mechanism. Hope you guys can see that. So now I gotta find a way to get the bushing out from the center of it. All right guys, I'd love to tell you that was super easy but it really was kind of a pain. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, these are the OEM guys. Been on this car since the beginning of time, 275,000 miles and 14 years. And they are in really, really good condition for what they are, but they're also squishy. They have some play and all that play is gonna make its way back to the stick shift in the palm of my hand when I'm throwing the gears. So I'm gonna get rid of as much play as we can. So we're gonna swap these rubber guys out for something a little bit more solid. I'll tell you what, man, nothing is ever easy. And as you might imagine, these things are being a pain in my butt. Um, but yeah, so the way these things work is you slide them on. So then this washer clips into this groove here and you have to clip it on. Now that's the hard part, getting that washer into that groove in the engine bay is proving to be really difficult. So I'm struggling here, but uh, I'm gonna make it happen. All right, guys, this is getting crazy. All right, so real quick, I hope you can see that. I was able to get that washer on, so we are good with that one. I used a pipe and a sledgehammer. So now you see that the other one has been disconnected and disassembled because 
I went ahead and tried to slot it with a uh, hacksaw. And as you can see, I went a little bit too far there. But the idea is that put a slot in it so that the little pin will slide in there. Now, look what I'm up against here. <laughs> Dude, it is going to pour. It is going to absolutely pour. So let me see if I can throw this together real quick so I can pull this in the garage and finish up. All right, guys, what is going on? It is the following day, and uh, I'm sorry I didn't film that storm last night, man. It was pretty intense, but I was so busy just trying to close the car up and get cars inside the garage. So I apologize for not filming it. But anyway, I digress. Let's get this video wrapped up here, and let me show you what I've been working on this morning. I've been notching this final bushing here uh, to make that pin go through and I just did a test fit and it works So let me go ahead and reinstall these and I should say you should put a little grease on these before you reinstall them All right, so Installation complete except for one thing and let me show you what I couldn't get finished and we'll have to wait for another day but I Could not get that pedal on there on the gas pedal So the pedal there's no way it fits. I mean, I'd be shocked if that thing fits without modification and these are not the OBX pedals that used to be made for these cars. They were discontinued a way long time ago. So uh, you got to kind of go with what you can find. And I found those and they match. So I purchased them. But yeah, that gas pedal is not fit on there. So what I am going to do in the future is I'm going to remove the pedal altogether. The pedal itself is plastic. I'm going to go ahead and kind of sand it down and get that pad to fit. I think with the pedal off the car, I'll have a much better chance um, than doing it with the pedal on the car. So anyway, let's go ahead and get this car started, get it out for a romp, and see if all the upgrades that we did make a difference. All right, guys, we are out on the town, and let me tell you, shifter feels good. Now, does it feel like an Acura NSX? No, it does not feel like an Acura NSX. However, it is much improved. Those of you who have a stock shifter know that the uh, stock Scion XB shifter leaves a lot to be desired. It is kind of like a broomstick in a bucket. There's so much throw, there's so much slop. So uh, any kind of improvement is a good improvement and this definitely does help. Um, another great thing is I love the way it looks. So that's super cool. <laughs> but um, yeah, everything's working, man. The pushings feel good. The shifting does feel more precise. I really love the location of the knob now. Before, to me, it was up a little too high. I really love where it is now. My hand kind of just falls down to the spot and that weighted shift knob really makes it easy to shift. New transmission fluid, everything's nice and smooth. And uh, you know, quite honestly, the pedals actually feel pretty good. So, you know, good all around. Um, now, a lot of you are probably wondering, hey, why don't you go with a short shifter? And that's a great question. And I do like short shifters, but I've done a ton of research on short shifters for this car. And when I got this car, it did have a short shifter on it, well, an alleged short shifter. It had one of those Axiom, I believe it's called, little shifter things, they're like 30 bucks, and they mount on the transmission. And what they do is they manipulate the throw of the, of the stick by uh, changing up kind of like the angle or shortening it somehow on the transmission, and it really makes the shifter really, really notchy. And in my opinion, that is why the transmission went out on this car. So the previous owner installed that little Axiom thing. I hated it at first. I got used to it. I never liked it, but I left it in because honestly I was lazy and didn't feel like removing it. And over time, the gearbox wore out and I wound up stranded on 95 <laughs> and had to replace the transmission. So uh, I won't ever go near something like that again. There are some other shifters that manipulate the actual you know, height of the um, shifter arm. TRD made one that is like a full-on replacement where you get a whole new base and that whole bit But everything I read online is they're just not that great. So for this car I'm just gonna stay away from all that keep it a keep it a stock shifter But strengthen the parts that can get weak over time or give you kind of a numb feel back So anyway guys, that's gonna be the video for today. Please hit that like button. Please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed it man. And hey don't have a manual it's okay it's okay you still got time go ahead and throw a for sale sign on that puppy get rid of that automatic and get yourself a proper five speed thanks so much for watching guys we'll see you next time